right, so um, it's been a couple of days since I uh, started this installation and I had to stop because basically I assumed that this was going to be a plug and play thing where you know you got the, the harness that came with the with the unit and then you got the factory harness and those connected up and voila you're all set to go and um, the fact that it came with two different options for this plug the radio did uh, I'm like okay so one doesn't work the other one will well that wasn't the case at all um, uh, basically none of them worked um, the unit wouldn't even turn on uh, so I basically taken the last couple of days to do some research and I found this youtuber amazing road and they actually did an installation to a similar unit on the w211 this is obviously a, a c209 but um, it's uh, the same era 2005 ish so um, the units very similar and their their harness in the video in their video was all the color coding was the same as mine so um, I'm basically just, you know, copying what they did and uh, I already did a, a dry run and the unit does turn on. Uh, I do need another piece of equipment which I don't have, I ordered it. It was a, a decoder for the uh, fiber optic. So these orange wires um, connect to an amplifier in the trunk and that amplifier then signals all the speakers. So. Uh, this unit is not compatible with that and what you need is a decoder that kind of transmits um, the analog signal to fiber and transforms it into analog and vice versa so um, the um, I did remove the uh, factory CD changer from the from the glove compartment um, that was just uh, two connections it was the fiber optic and uh, the this plug here that has the um, ignition ground and 12 volt um, and basically I just want to go through the wiring uh, it it seems to be very complicated but once you kind of wrap your head around it it's not that bad um, so basically there's two main things you need obviously is you need a 12 volts constant and ground. So for the 12 volt constant uh, on this particular car, you have a, a fuse box here on the driver's side or the left side of the vehicle um, and on the dashboard. And basically I bought one of these little um, add a circuit or sp splice, um, I don't know what you wanna call them. Actually, I have the box right here. Um, at a circuit holder so I bought this at a uh, AutoZone I think it was like six something just under seven dollars but basically what it does all it is is a, a little um, GM style connector that goes in place of a fuse and then it has a lead wire coming out of it so um, and what I did was then I crimped my own wire onto that but basically Let's see what it looks like here this car already had four empty slots so I just am using one of those and then it has provisions here for a fuse I've also seen these where the it has no fuse here but the fuse is an inline so either one will work this is basically basically just so you could get 12 volts constant um, going to the unit and again that's important it's 12 volts constant so it should have read 12 volts even when everything is off okay so um, so I just wired that, you know, fed the wire underneath the, the dash and that red wire, um, so don't want to confuse you guys, I spliced it, I have a split here and that's just because I'm going to connect something else in the future. So pretend this isn't here, it'll be just a single wire and that connects to the thick yellow wire on the main harness here. So I spliced it in there, okay, so red to yellow. Okay, or I shouldn't say that. 12 volt constant to the yellow. How's that? All right. Because I don't know what color wires you're going to be using. Ground. Ground is the black wire on the harness. So I use black wire. I tried to be consistent. I didn't have yellow wire. So I use red wire for, for you know, hot, the hot wire, which kind of makes sense to me. 
the ground wire um, you just need this to go to the grounding point and again don't be confused by this so uh, Y split here this is just because again I plan to connect something else in the future so this is going underneath down and right here uh, I don't know if you can see down there but that is a grounding point to the chassis there's like multiple brown wires right there connecting to the chassis right there and there's a bolt on top so all I did was uh, on the current on the end of the black wire I crimped one of those little eyelets and uh, and I put the bolt through it I did, removed the bolt put the eyelet through and reattached it so now I have ground and I have constant 12 volts okay next um, the harness has uh, so this is the part that uh, connects to the back of the radio and this is the part that connects to the CAN bus decoder if you don't have the CAN bus the vehicles um, like the, the steering wheel buttons for volume and phone and all stuff none of it will work so uh, what you need to connect to the CAN bus is you need to find um, the, these two green wires so there's it's a solid green and this green with a black stripe the solid green is positive the green with the black stripe is negative okay so those wires connect from here to this plug here and then back to this one so it it's all connected so it doesn't matter where you splice it but um, you need to splice uh, I didn't have green and black wire. What I did was I just connected. I only had green wire. I connected a green for the negative, and then for the positive, I just grabbed the sharpie and I ran the sharpie across the wire before I installed it. So I, I kind of created my own green with black stripe. Um, so I labeled them so I wouldn't get messed up. So there's my negative it has the black stripe and my can bust positive solid green and then on the factory harness okay you splice those into these two brown wires okay so um it it's a solid brown and a brown with a red stripe now the red stripe i first i thought the brown with red was going to be a uh, positive wrong red with the brown is negative okay um well, what I did was I just put a voltmeter on here and to make sure the polarity was correct. So when the voltmeter, if you have the, I'll show you my, my particular voltmeter, I just have one of these little guys. Uh, if you connect, oh, sorry about that. So if you connect the, the red tester to positive and the black one to negative, for example you'll get 12 volts right but if you have the polarity reversed you'll get a negative 12 so you know how, that's how you figure out which one's positive which one's negative so um so just to recap um negative brown with a red stripe positive solid brown okay and those on the harness um green is positive negative is the green with the black stripe okay So now you have your CAN bus taken care of, okay? So now you just need ignition, so, or ACC. So ignition is when you turn the key to your first uh, position, um, that's when you have 12 volts. So you could find a, a, a source. Uh, I'm using the cigarette lighter. So that's this uh, red and black wire. This little plug here connects to the back of the cigarette lighter, okay? Um, and basically that will give me 12 volts once I turn the key to the first uh, on position okay and you need to connect two wires to that you need to connect um, let's see if I can find it here okay you need to connect I I, uh, I used red wire for this a thinner gauge red wire right there right here so basically you need to connect the orange wire and the red wire okay both to ignition so I just splashed it right into the harness now mind you I'm not cutting these wires and, and attaching my own wire I'm splicing mine in so that I don't mess up the connections that run from the CAN bus 
to the harness plug this black one okay so um, I just spliced it in so again the orange wire by the way is uh, it, it it does all the backlighting on the unit like uh, the back of the buttons and the slot for the CD and DVD that's all backlit um, so if you don't have this on it won't light up this one is actually to power the radio or the switch to turn the radio on and off automatically uh, with your ignition so when you when you turn off the car it takes about 10 seconds and then the unit will turn off and then when you turn on the uh, and I don't mean turn on the engine I just mean turn it to the first uh, uh, position on the ignition you'll uh, turn on the unit automatically okay so that is basically it for getting the unit to work okay oh there's one more um, on the and I'm not exactly sure uh, but basically the antenna ampl this is antenna amplifier uh, this is going to connect to the factory um, antenna plug which is the the black with the purple connector in my car okay this antenna amplifier has this blue wire coming out of it and I'm not exactly sure why but I just followed what the other YouTuber did. Um, it connects to the white and blue wire on the harness. So, let's see if I can find it here. Okay. It's hard to see that it's white and blue. Because it's actually blue with just a little white stripe but splice that wire onto there so so that's basically it that's all you need to get the unit to turn on i already did a dry run it does turn on however i have no sound because i still have no interface with the fiber optics so that's the piece I'm waiting for uh, I'm gonna wait till I have that piece back to uh, reinstall everything back because I want to make sure obviously everything's working but um, so what I'm gonna do now is just permanently connect all these wires I still have to connect the, the ignition wires here um, and uh, you know just do a little bit of wire management so that when that box comes in and that box basically um, I'm gonna have to remove this um, a fiber optic connector out of here and it connects into that box and then that box also has three wires one for constant 12 volts ground and one for ignition again that's the reason why I had these extra uh, wires spliced in uh, just to anticipate having to wire that as well and um, once that comes in I'll finish the installation and hopefully we'll have a working stereo all right guys so the uh, module or the interface with the uh, uh, fiber optic connector finally came in uh, i ordered this from alvin uh, i think there's uh, different companies out there that sell this but they're basically all the same so uh, this is compatible with mercedes, mercedes ml gl and r on the website also says CLK, uh, 2005 to 2011, and I guess uh, the, some Porsches use the same uh, type of fiber optic. So it can it comes with this connector that has um, a auxiliary um, right and left. I guess these are uh, RCA lines, and then it has a um, ground positive and ignition wire. Uh, and then the box itself has so that's the plug for the, the wi little wiring harness and then this is an adapter oops, um, that goes to the um, goes to the fiber optic so I basically have to disconnect the fiber optic from the factory harness and then uh, pop it into here and then this into the unit and then wire up these wires and then we're gonna need to um, 
the input into the stereo. I was hoping I didn't have to use this because who the hell wants all this stuff in the back of uh, the, the unit over there, but um, looks like I would just be using two of these uh, um, red, red and white auxiliary left in, auxiliary right in, so I guess it would be these two. And then I guess these I could just tape off and, you know, try to fit. I'm starting to get worried about wire management because I, I, when I uh, dry fitted the, um, the unit in there, it stuck out. It fits perfectly, you know, the, it matches the console, but it sticks out a little bit. And I don't know if I could get it to fit. And I tried to clean up some of the wires out of the way, um, but uh, I measured the unit. It is about a quarter inch deeper front to back, so... I'm hoping that that's not going to become an issue because even though there's like a foam pad back here, there's not much to get beyond that. So, um, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed. But uh, let's go ahead and wire up this guy and see if this is the missing uh, piece of the puzzle. All right, so... Um, the fiber optic cable, all you got to do is pull back this little tab. I already undid it so I can do this with one hand, uh, but this slides right out. Um, you then grab your little, um, the adapter that's in here. Sorry about that. Grab this adapter and you're going to put, you can see that it's got like a, little chamfered corner right there. So you line that up to the chamfered corner on the uh, fiber optic. Pop that in, trying to do this with one hand. That clicked on, there you go. Now you plug into the box on the fiber optic side. Trying to do this with one hand is not easy. Just, okay, so it looks like it goes this way. That clicked on. Now all you gotta do is connect the little harness here. See how it goes. It goes this way. So right now I'm just gonna try to connect all the wires uh, to do a little dry run and then, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have success and uh, go ahead and finish connecting all the wires um, into the unit and try it on to see if uh, that solved the issue. I'll plug this back in. So we have uh, everything as neat as possible. And uh, yeah, so let's wire this up and see if it works. All right guys, so I figured it out, got everything working. Uh, just a couple of things. I misspoke before. I had, so I, I turned it all on and it wasn't working. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it had no sound, I should say. And um, I'm like, great, here we go again. So I, I was like, does this mean that this little uh, um, fiber optic decoder is not working? And then I realized that two things. One, I had to reinstall the um, CD changer because the way fiber optics work is basically one line sends the signal and the other one returns it. So whenever it's plugged into something, that device acts like a returning unit. So when that plug was left unplugged, basically the signal was going out and not circling back. So it's almost like like a pipeline where you cannot have an open faucet, okay? So you have to have it plugged. So if you don't want to have the, the CD changer connected, you could buy a little a fiber optic loop. Uh, I'm gonna put that link to the description. I, I don't have it right now in this setup but i am gonna get it because uh one thing i don't think the cd changer is actually gonna work with this unit 
so there's no reason of you know having it in the first place but i'll put that in the description i'll put i'll put the uh decoder uh fiber optic decoder part number and description where i got it or the link to it and uh, the other thing that i was wrong was i had the 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 rca cables coming out of the uh, decoder box said auxiliary in right and left right and i plugged it into the incorrect rca cable so i put it in the one that also said auxiliary in it has to go into the um i use the front left and the front right and then i actually went inside the unit to set up the balance so i know you might think that um that means does that mean that I'm only having uh, two speakers work? But no, remember, this is sending the signal, the fiber optic sending the signal to the amplifier. And the signal coming out of the amplifier is what goes to the speakers. So I have full sound on all four speakers. So um, basically, I, you know, I'm not gonna waste time showing how to put everything back because, you know, you, it's basically a reverse of the removal. I have to do all this wire management, obviously, but um, this is basically the unit. And now if I put the radio on, we have sound. And I have the CAN bus works as well. So we're all set. Let me put the mute here. So um, again, I have to play with this, but um, it's pretty cool. I was just going through it. You have um, all these apps that you you're basically uh, you could parallel your 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 Google phone or, or uh, Android phone, and any app that you could put on your phone, you could put on here. So. Um, this is basically, like I said, I'm going to call this complete. I'm sorry I had to make three different uh, um, videos about this, but like I said, it was a learning process and I just wanted to go through it and have you come along with me. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully this will be helpful to somebody out there doing this installation. Thank you.